All right, we've been looking for this cave for about half a year now. We finally think we found it. It's a 150 foot drop. This has got to be it because there's a little hole here that's just pumping a bunch of air. Probably gonna throw a little stick down here, see if it goes. Hello! So we've been hit with a semi-major update, much of which is bug fixes and the ability to disable rockpox, but which also includes a bundle of enemy and weapon balance changes. Let's get into it from the top. First off, a bunch of rockpox related stuff. The infection range when popping a boil is now 2.5 meters instead of 3 meters, and the total infection done by this status has been lowered from 35 to 25. However, it can now stack up to five times. Basically, this is more forgiving under normal circumstances, but is more punishing if you drill them. Then we have a bunch of changes to the infection status itself. The delay before infection starts dropping is down from 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds. It decays at a rate of 7 per second instead of 6. You break out of an infection faster, 11 key presses instead of 15 and you don't take an extra tick of damage upon breaking out anymore. Again, more forgiving in general. On to enemies. The Corruptor's stomp and spike attacks had their readability improved, their move speed was reduced, and the feedback when shooting their breakable weak points was improved. Since the biggest issues with this thing were clarity and kiting players across uneven terrain, this all makes sense. Spreaders had their aiming logic updated, so they shoot terrain less often, but also their shots can get shot down. Ice Goober's projectiles now do partial ice damage, 50%, and 50% of that is also added as cold, so they'll contribute to freezing you. Technically. As you can see here, they're only inflicting 3.75 cold per shot, Temperature infliction doesn't change based on hazard level, both for players and enemies. So you freeze Hazard 5 Praetorians just as quickly as Hazard 2 Praetorians, and a Hazard 5 Ice Bomber freezes you just as slowly as a Hazard 2 Ice Bomber, even though the actual damage inflicted changes. On the other hand, Ice Praetorian Breath now does a bit of damage. Stingtails were, maybe predictably, nerfed pretty hard. You're less likely to get as many of them, they glow more and apparently have an easier to hit mouth hitbox. Their grab attack has also been nerfed and now has a 15 meter range instead of 20 meters. Plus, when they successfully grab you, there's a 15 second cooldown before they can attempt to grab you again. And perhaps most significantly of all, they're far more squishy. Their base HP is down from 600 to 400 and they are no longer classified as large enemies, which means their HP does not scale up with player count. Previously, their HP could get as high as 900 on Hazard 5 with 4 players. Now in that same context, it'll be roughly half that. But that's not all, because they've gained significant damage type weaknesses too. Stingtails now have 10% vulnerability to pierce damage, 30% vulnerability to electric damage, and 50% vulnerability to explosive damage. They got 30% resistance to fire damage, but that's hardly going to move the needle here. Not to belabor the already common sentiment here, but I think this is excessive. I think the changes to spawn logic and the grab itself make sense, but nerfing their tankiness on top of that is a bit much, especially when three separate values that affect their survivability are getting hit all at once here their size type, their base HP, and their resists. On to weapons. Breach Cutter got changes to two overclocks. The first is a minor buff to high voltage crossover, the status it inflicts going from a 4 second duration to 5 seconds. Roll Control got reworked pretty heavily. It now makes your shots constantly rapidly spin helping them cover a wide area, and pulling down M1 now lets you guide the projectile, sort of like a hurricane missile but with much worse turning. 
Also, it gets a 0.5 second lifetime bonus. It's mostly useful for the spinning and lifetime bonus, while the guidance is just extra. Shaped shells on the boomstick got significantly buffed. Previously, it shrank horizontal and vertical spread by 50%, taking them from 35 by 10 to 17.5 by 5. Now it sets them to 5 by 5. So vertical spread is still getting reduced to 50%, and horizontal spread is getting reduced to 1 7th, or a bit less than 15% of its normal value, which is a pretty huge change to say the least. The lock got a small tweak to let the input buffer work better with its manual fire, making it easier to mash out single shots. To compensate, the rate of fire of manual shots has been lowered from 6 to 5, not that anyone cares. Now the coil gun. Lot of changes here. Enough that you could call it a rework. Previously the coil gun's normal trails did 3.5 fire damage every 0.2 to 0.25 seconds for 15.55 average DPS. Now they do 3.9 fire damage every 0.25 seconds for 15.6 DPS. Basically the same, but with no RNG. More significantly, these trails damage over time effects can stack now, up to 10 times. The electric trail effect was unchanged and does not stack. The tier 1 charge speed mod got displaced with a new plus 2 second trail duration mod and was moved over to tier 2, replacing the reload speed mod that used to be there. However, some of that reload speed got added to the base weapon, reducing the reload time by 0.6 seconds. That's greatly appreciated with this weapon's slow reload and how that reload mod was hard to justify on this tier. Overcharger had its damage bonus increased, though the patch notes here are a bit weird. The old Overcharger could already get more than a 32 damage bonus at max, especially if you took it together with the charge speed mod. That's not possible anymore, but that's not a big deal because the new version is much better regardless. Previously, the coil gun would overheat after holding the charge for 2.5 seconds, and Overcharger added plus 8 bonus damage for every extra 0.25 seconds you held the charge past full, which meant that your maximum possible damage bonus actually varied based on your charge speed, since if you charged the shot faster, then you had more time to accumulate a bigger damage bonus before overheating. Things are different now, though. There's actually another change to the base gun here. The coil gun overheats slower now, with heating rates that vary based on whether you are charging normally or continuing to hold a fully charged shot. 0.4 heat per second while charging, and 0.2 heat per second while holding. By default, this means your time until overheating is 4.16 seconds. If you take the tier 2 charge speed mod, your time until overheating is 4.66 seconds. And if you take an overclock that slows your charge, that will mean you have less time to overheat. But Overcharger also works differently. It now adds plus 12.5 damage every 0.25 seconds, up to a set maximum of plus 100 bonus damage. You have plenty of time to bank all that damage, even with the slowest possible charge speed. Moving on from Overcharger, the Tier 5 Trail Radius mod went from plus 0.5 to plus 1 meter radius, improving it a fair bit, and Necrothermal got buffed. Its blast radius was increased from 4 meters to 6 meters. If that sounds like a big radius, it's because it is. The damage is lower at 80 pure fire damage and heat, instead of the previous 140 damage half of which was explosive and the other half was fire damage plus heat, but that makes it somewhat more practical to chain cross enemies with. Additionally, Necrothermal now has a 30% damage boost against burning targets, 
like the damage bonus on Volatile Bullets, since this is DMG Fire and not DMG Burn, it's both damage and heat, so it keeps the target burning. Several overclock changes as well. Hellfire lost its Trail Radius bonus, which is a significant and also deserved nerf, though it is worth saying that it's well suited to the now buffed Necrothermal. Triple Tech Chamber's follow-up shots are now 75% the damage of the first shot, and still consume 50% of the ammo of the first shot, as well as being indirectly buffed by the trail stacking change. This is pretty good single target damage on top of the trail spam. And backfeeding's damage penalty was replaced with a minus 3 second trail duration penalty, which I suppose it's better if you used it for direct damage, but it's much worse if you used it for trail crowd control. The stubby got hit with a few buffs as well. The recoil got reduced a bit, and the tier 2 recoil mod lowered slightly to compensate. Both damage upgrades went from plus 2 to plus 3, which is a pretty good buff. The weak point and conductive bullets mods got reduced down from plus 30% to plus 25% to compensate, but you wind up with higher damage overall, even if you're only hitting weak points. An armor break mod was added to tier 4. Time will tell how useful this is. And an accuracy mod was added to tier 5, which gives you a 0.6x base spread multiplier. As for its overclocks, EM Discharge and Turret Arc both have no friendly fire on their turret AoEs now. And they both have these range indicators, which are especially useful for Turret Arc. Plus, EM Discharge AoE no longer has damage falloff, and Turret Arc's status from the Arc persists for a second on enemies who run out of the beam. And finally, Satchel Charges now round up on resupplying like everything else, so you can take three instead of four and still get two back per resupply. Lastly, electric slows, and enemy slow resists in general, were reworked. The long story short is that all electric effects, minus tasers which already worked on everything, now use an effect that enemies cannot be immune to unless they have 100% electric resistance, so you can electrify things that you previously couldn't. However, there is also a new special flag which makes certain enemies, namely oppressors and dreadnoughts, get 75% resistance to slows. Also, that's on top of the normal elemental resists that affect slows, so don't expect to slow oppressors or dreadnoughts to a crawl with electric effects. IFGs aren't affected by this new slow resist, however, so they're more effective than other sources. Oh, also, Wardens and Corlock healing pods are bugged at the moment and don't use their beams. I sure hope they fix that one right away, right guys?